Hello and welcome to this Unreal Editor for Fortnite tutorial series covering Burst. Burst is the brand new programming language they've introduced into Unreal Editor for Fortnite to help people who have never touched programming before to get started programming their own game content. So in this episode we're going to take a look at Burst, how to get started with it and show you a bit around what kind of things you're seeing inside of the Burst code and explain what's going on there. Now, if you've come in with some programming background already, you're going to have a greater advantage as it's using a lot of similar uh, syntax and uh, functions and things like that as you are probably used to. However, if you're brand new, don't worry, we'll try and baby step our way through it and help you understand exactly what it is that you're looking at when you look at Verse. So, let's get started. So, to get started with Verse, first of all, you understand it's a brand new programming language designed just for Unreal Editor for Fortnite. However, if you have experience with programming, you're going to see a lot of similarities and find it a far easier transition to get started inside Verse. So what I've done here is I've brought in and opened up a brand new project and I've started off with the project example of Verse, uh, of Verse uh, getting started, like their first example project they'd have. And in here, it gives you a good example to showcase how Verse looks and how it works. So. Your verse classes, in this project at least, are stored inside your content drawer, inside these creative devices. And here we've got the Hello World device. We can click on this and open it up. We can also find all our verse classes by going up to verse up top here and using the verse explorer. This will show us all the verse classes available to us in our project. And there's the Hello World device dot verse. So I can open this up. So here we have a bunch of code already here for us inside the Hello World device. Let's go through what we've got here. So at the top here, we've got our modules. These are little code modules which contain all the functions and all the knowledge about Verse that we actually need to use. So if we're using Verse, for example, in devices, we need these. Okay, so uh, that'd be at the top of most of your things here. But if you're making your own modules, you can also import those in using uh, this here by using the path name. Uh, next, we've got the uh, class definition. So we've got the name of the class, which is Hello World Device. And here it is assigning the class to the class type of Creative Device. So this is a type of uh, class called a Creative Device class. And then inside of here, we've got functions. And these is uh, a built-in function here called OnBegin. And it's got a load of things after it. We'll explain what these do in a second. Uh, and then inside the function, it's got the prints here. And we assign code inside a function by indenting it in. We call that nesting. And basically, it means that this code here belongs to onBegin. So let's talk about what we're seeing here. Override. The override identifier here basically tells it to take the onBegin event that exists already in Creative Device and override it. So basically, get rid of all of its contents and just use the stuff only. The suspend basically makes makes it this uh, event here a asynchronous, meaning that it gets fired, but it doesn't hang up inside that function. It just carries on going. This is very similar to basically how events work inside blueprints if you're used to Unreal Engine 5. And void is a return type. Our function here is an event. And it's not going to return anything. Therefore, it can be void. And in here, we've got some logic just to print some lines of uh, text to our log. I'm going to print the words hello world and print this sum and its actual conclusion here. So let's take a look at this in game. If I was to close this now and drag this into my scene, and you can see here the creative device has a default mesh component for this little computer thing just to make it look pretty, I guess. But if you want to change that, you can do to go to stack mesh component here and change it to whatever mesh you want to choose from your library. Also, the same goes for materials, but we'll leave it as that for now. So now I'm going to go push changes up top here and save selected. And that'll go over to my client view in Fortnite and I can take a look at that in game. So let's go take a look. So in my world here, you can see the creative device is now here. And if I hit tab and go to my log and you can see it's printed out. Hello world. And they print out the, the sum two plus two equals four. Okay. Um, yeah. And there we go. So you can see it working perfectly fine just there. So I'm going to end the game there and go back to my editor. So what we're seeing here is some very basic functionality. OK, very, very basic. But if you're completely new to programming, there's a few things you have to be aware of and how to customize this thing. So let's go have a look at the code for this uh, 
object. I'm going to go open this up. And that will come up into Visual Studio. Okay. So, yeah, great. Um, so here we have uh, the Hello World and the sum there being used. So if you can see here, when we're doing print here, print, this is a function. And you know it's a function because it has the name here and it has followed by two brackets. And what's included in these brackets are what we call parameters. And what we're doing here is we're printing a string in particular. This string is indicated by the quote marks. And so I can print the words, hello world, exactly as they appear. Now, if I go to this second string here, you can see it's going to print the words, at the, at least the digits, 2 plus 2 equals. And then we're using curly brackets. Now, curly brackets are a way for us to implement uh, other values, so like variables, into here without having to cut out and append to a string. We can insert it into that there. So here we've got just numbers 2 plus 2, obviously equals 4, printing out. So let's talk about how we can actually use a variable in here. So to make a variable, all you've got to do is somewhere inside your thing here, we're going to do it up top here. We'll do var var, and you can put the name of the variable you want. So you can do uh, sum, we'll call it. And you know you want to put in a colon. And the colon will be the type of, after the colon will be, sorry, will be the type of variable that it is. In this case, we'll do an int. And we'll set a default value to, uh, we'll do four. Okay. And there you go. That's all I've got to do. So now I've got a variable called sum and it's an integer and it has a value of four. So what I can do here is rather than doing two plus two, I can just write the word sum and I'll insert my variable sum into that slot there. And there are different types of variables you can use. Uh, some of the most common ones you can have are going to be uh floats uh which is float and not equal sorry colon float equals 5.0 so a float is a decimal point number um you have as many numbers you want there um next you've got string which is some text you want to have on there that's a string uh boolean though is not boolean in verse it's called logic so you type in logic and equals true. So if you're used to programming with booleans, it's basically called logic. I don't know why they changed it. I, I, I thought everyone knew, understood what boolean was. Apparently not. So logic is what they've called it for whatever reason. Now there are obviously loads of different types of variable types out there. Um, but we'll cover those as we come to them in future videos. We're not going to go through to around each and every single one of them. So alongside creating variables, you can also create your own functions. Functions are little packets of code that you can call and return values from them. In this case, we're going to make a very simple function. I'm going to call it uh, get sum. And all you do is put in the colon, the type it's going to return. So if it's returning nothing, put it as void, much like how we've done on begin here. Or you put in uh, the float or int or whatever type it is going to return here. So here we're going to return an int. So I'm going to type in int and do equals and go new line. So now we build the code block for our function here. And I'm going to do a simple uh, variable here. We go var my value equals two plus two. Oh, uh, oh I forgot to define my value. My value int like so and then i can return my value so i go return my value so now if i want to use this inside of my uh code here i can go into print here and just type in here get sum and then put in empty parameters here because i've got no parameters for this oh i forgot to actually call this put that there um so you have to put in a print, I forgot to put the parentheses in the brackets, put the brackets in to identify it as a, uh, a function. So in here, we're calling a function, get some int, it's going to return, we've got new variable, my value, int equals two plus two, return my value. So this is going to return the value of two. 
So there you go, we've taken a quick look at verse and looked at variables and functions inside of this new programming language. In the next episode, we're going to talk a bit more about functions and how we can use these inside actual content inside our, of our game. So you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Without your support, this would not be possible. So thank you so, so much. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.